Hello again. I sometimes grow a little irritated when I see some black people expecting not even handed and equal treatment, but rather special treatment, different from what the rest of us expect or indeed are used to. Here is a classic example of what I mean. I give a link in the description to this video to a newspaper report about a white woman whose teenage son went missing a year ago and is almost certainly dead. In March 2020, Owen Hardin had a row with his mother, he was almost 17 at the time, it's the sort of thing that happens, and he walked out of the house. The following day, she rang the police, who didn't take the matter very seriously. They said, you know what teenagers are like, you'll turn up tomorrow. 99% of the time they do. This is fair enough. Teenagers are always storming out the house and then coming back a couple of days later after staying with friends. I mean, in the event, the boy didn't return, hasn't been heard of since. He probably uh, fell over a cliff and the body was swept out to sea. This is hardly the fault of the police, though. They behaved correctly. I give a link in a newspaper to a newspaper article about the business in the description to this video. Now let us consider what happened earlier this year when a black teenager went missing under similar circumstances. In March this year, 19-year-old Richard Okoroge left his home and disappeared. Just as with Owen Harding, the police didn't take the matter seriously, told his mother that there was nothing they could do until he'd been missing a little longer. As it happened, the missing youth was already dead, having apparently drowned himself. His mother then complained that the police were failing them and hinted that this was because they were black and that was why they didn't take seriously her initial report that her teenage son had left the house and not returned. A spokesman for the Metropolitan Police said that the Forces Directorate of Professional Standards was aware of Mrs Okorogai's case amid concerns about the Forces response to his disappearance. In other words, the police are going to waste time and energy on a ridiculous allegation that racism was behind the police attitude. Just compare these two cases and you'll see that simply treating black parents and white in the same way under the same circumstances leads inexorably to allegations of racism. Again, I give a link to that newspaper article above. I have, by the way, a personal interest in this case because the police were told that I might be responsible for Richard Okorogai's death. <laughs> Seriously, I give a link to a tweet that was made to the police at the time of his disappearance. It is to the Metropolitan Police and says, Please take Simon Webb and his affiliation seriously in the case of Richard Okorogai. He is a virulent online racist who happens to live in Loughton, close to where Richard was last seen. See his YouTube channel, History Debunked, for evidence. There were other similar tweets, and I happen to know that the person who is hiding behind the identity that uh, responsible for these tweets is an old friend from the comments here. Hi there. I have not yet had a knock on the door, so perhaps the police do not really suspect me of involvement in the death. Returning to the way that the police are expected to treat black people differently from white, we look at a shooting at the weekend in the London district of Peckham, an area notorious for gangland violence between rival criminals, most of whom are uh, feuding Afro-Caribbeans. A woman called Sasha Johnson was shot in the head. She's black. She was an activist for the Black Lives Matter movement last year and founded a party of her own. Almost immediately it was suggested that she had been attacked by white supremacists who were angered by her beliefs and the way in which she stood up for racial justice. Diane Abbott, the black member of parliament, tweeted, Black activist Sasha Johnson in hospital in critical condition after sustaining a gunshot wound to the head. Nobody should have to potentially pay with their life because they stood up for racial justice. 
hashtag Black Lives Matter. Johnson had founded a political group called the Taking the Initiative Party and they said that the police were not interested in shooting for this reason. We believe that the police statement regarding Sasha not being the intended victim is an attempt to pacify the hundreds of thousands of people around the world that are infuriated by this attack. We are appalled by the dismissive tone of the Metropolitan Police statement and urge them to take this incident seriously and see it for what it is, an attempt of murder. Well, of course, the police are treating it as attempted murder. It's simply that they have a different view on who the attempted murderers were. Of course, these days, that sort of thing is simply a typical incident in London. Um, a black house party was taking place at three in the morning. Four black gangsters turned up and opened fire on the house and somebody got caught in the crosswire, took a bullet in the head. If black lives really matter, then this is precisely the sort of thing that we should be concerned about rather than uh, racist police officers. However, there is a twist to the story. Sasha Johnson, the fierce anti-racist campaigner, was out on bail when she was shot at the weekend. She had already appeared once in court in connection with the charge against her. Would anybody like to guess what offence she is accused of? It is racially aggravated harassment. You could not, as they say, make it up. <laughs>